ओके सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड एंड वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू सी इन दिस सेक्शन ऑफ द वीडियो इज दैट हाउ वुड यू डिटरमाइन द आई पी एड्रेस ब्लॉक और द सी आई डी आर ब्लॉक दैट यू आर गोइंग टू असाइन टू अ कस्टम सब नेट दैट यू आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट अंडर योर डिफॉल्ट वी पी सी सो वेन यू क्रिएट योर अकाउंट बाई डिफॉल्ट यू गेट अ वी पी सी इन दैट रीजन विच इज अ डिफॉल्ट वी पी सी एंड फॉर ऑल द अवेबिलिटी जोन्स दैट यू हैव अंडर योर रीजन लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर मुंबई रीजन वी हैव थ्री अवेबिलिटी जोन्स so for each availability zone by default a default subnet is created under the default vpc so if i go to the vpc you uh, you will see that you will have three subnet each of these subnet are for a specific uh, availability zone that falls within the mumbai region so as i switch between the different uh, subnets you can see that each one of it belongs to a different uh, availability zone and you could see that each one of them is already flagged as a default subnet and now with your default uh, vpc and alongside your default subnet when you create your account you also get a default internet gateway and a main route table so basically all the subnets that are created by default they all are associated explicitly to the route table and because this route table if you go to the routes in that route table you will see that it is uh, redirecting traffic from this uh, internet gateway hence all the default subnets are public because it's uh, explicitly associated to the main route table and the main route table is uh, uh, is pointing to this internet gateway hence in certain conditions where you have a requirement of creating an additional subnet uh, in this example we'll say that we require a private subnet so how we can create a private subnet and most importantly because we already have three subnets and each subnet has their uh, cidr block already assigned which is contiguous to the primary cidr block of the vpc how do we determine what cidr block we will be assigning to the new subnet that we are going to create so let's go back to subnet and let's click on a create subnet we will select the same default vpc and i will call this my private subnet for the availability zone we can leave it to no preference or you could select any one but here we go now what should we define here if i am just going back to view my vpc and my subnets so what we see here is that we have the three subnets that we have which is by default public they already have a set of cidr blocks already assigned so when we are creating a new subnet the fourth one in this series or under the same vpc we need to have a cidr which is contiguous to this cidr range and it falls within the primary cidr block which is associated with our vpc but at the same time whichever cidr block we are picking should not have conflicting ip ip addresses which with any of these cidr blocks so what is the way to correctly determine which would be the next contiguous block to assign to the new subnet that you are creating and for now 
the new block that I am trying to determine I am going to use a slash 20 uh, uh, CID notation for that block as well so for determining the next contiguous block how do you determine that for that let's take help of a subnet calculator you could use any but i use something called visual subnet calculator so let's understand uh let's go back to the subnet range here now let's pick up our vpc ip at the cidr block here now now here uh, if we want to say that i want to use a block uh, 172.31.1.0 slash 20 and update this and you'd see that the ending IP address here is 15.254 that means the next block that I can use can be 172.31.16.0 so let us see whether that is possible or not so let's go back and see whether it will conflict with any of the existing subnets so we said 172.31.16.0 well this is already assigned now if this is assigned uh, let's uh, pick this up and let's try to see if uh, there is a what is the next contiguous block that we could use that means 172.31 31.254 is the next uh, is the last IP address in this range so let's say I want to use 172.31.32.0 so let's see if uh, like what I want to probe is whether I can use 32.0 okay so let's see whether i can assign it back or whether it is already associated so here you can see that 32.0 is already associated well in that case let's see what is the last ip address in this cidr block range so it is 31.47.254 so how about 31.48.0 so I can use this 48.0 update so I will get the last IP address in this range 31.63 but the starting range let's see if uh, if it uh, conflicts anywhere with existing so 31.48 you don't have any conflict here so what we can do is that we can pick this up and we can try to define it here and with this we can create the subnet in case you are using any block that might conflict with the existing block suppose if i am using say 47.0 slash 24 uh, let's see what happens you'll see that it will automatically notify you that the cidr address overlaps with existing cidr block so this check is already there but you will need to correctly determine the next contiguous block by using this uh, method so now that we have determined that this block is available let's submit and see if uh, this gets accepted so as you can see here that i didn't get a conflict error hence my private subnet is now created okay so now that the subnet is created let's figure out whether this subnet has been rightly 
configured right now to act as a private subnet or is it configured still as a public subnet and the way to investigate that is that you could go to the route table associated with this subnet and you could look if the traffic is getting routed to a internet gateway and if yes then this subnet is not a private subnet in a sense or in its function yet so what we can do is that we can go to route tables and we can create a custom route i will call this route my private route table and i will associate a vpc the default vpc under which we have created this custom private subnet and i will click on create this route table once this route table is created we will associate this route table with the subnet that we created the private subnets so for that click on edit subnet association and we will select the private subnet that we had created please remember what is happening here is that as soon as this subnet we created there is a implicit association to the main route table where we had the internet gateway associated in the route but right now what we are doing is that we are explicitly defining the association for this particular subnet to a custom route table that we have created right now so this is an explicit association that we are doing right now so when we save this explicit association is saved and now if you go to your subnet and we have this subnet in the selection we go to the route table and now you can see that there is no internet gateway attached here hence this subnet now is properly configured as a private subnet so if you launch an instance within this subnet it will not have any connectivity to uh the internet so i will leave it at that for now you can go about creating an ec2 instance in this subnet and try to see if the connectivity works for you or not and try to explore it further and if you want uh, to see uh it in further action please uh, try to see the vpc series where you can see more action around the networking concepts So that's all for today's video. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.